Welcome to this Improvement Service series on the Christie Commission. Over three videos, we'll be hearing from Elma Murray, Councillor Alison Everson, and Professor James Mitchell on their perspectives of the impact of Christie. All interviews were recorded in 2021, around the time of the 10th anniversary of the Christie Commission report publishing, and against the backdrop of over 18 months in the COVID-19 pandemic. In this episode, we'll be exploring the origins of Christie, and in the following episodes, we'll look at if the panel feel we're progressing towards Christie, and finally how we can bring the Christie principles forward over the next 10 years. We'll start now with some introductions. I'm James Mitchell, Chair in Public Policy at the University of Edinburgh, and I was a member of the Christie Commission. Hello, I'm Councillor Alison Everson. I'm President of COSLA and Chair of the Board of the Improvement Service. I'm Elma Murray. Um, I'm the Interim Chair of the Accounts Commission for Scotland um, and have a number of other sort of charitable roles, uh, Chair of Young Scott, um, Deputy Chair of Developing Young Workforce, and I'm also a board member of Scotland Rural College. Um, at the time of the Christie Commission, when it was published, though, I was the uh, Chief Executive of North Ayrshire Council. And um, I was very, very excited about it. It resonated with me and, and what I was trying to do in my local area at the time. Why do you think we still talk about the Christie Commission 10 years on? I think that's mainly because we know it makes sense, because we know that the recommendations that Christie made have to be at the heart of a fair and equal society. I first became a councillor in 2012 and all that time that I've been a councillor, I've heard officers, I've had count, heard councillors talking about the importance of Christie and what it tells for the way we must do business. So from that, it's clear that people know how important the recommendations are to not only social renewal, but also to economic development, because obviously by looking at social needs for a fair and just society, we'll also be tackling economic need as well and helping with employability and helping drive that econ economic development we need across Scotland too. Those four pillars, people, prevention, performance and partnership, are so integral to everything that we're doing in local government across Scotland and I think we know they have to be the way forward. I think it's also talked about though in a negative sense because we know we haven't delivered because even though we know it's important that we put these things in place we know we need these pillars we know we need to respond to them we haven't done that in a systemic way we have got great examples locally of individual times when Christie has been put into practice but we haven't grasped the nettle to do the whole thing and move forward with everything and it's also important that we talk about it because the context driving Christie is also still there. Uh, he was talking about increasing demand for public services and a time when there was um, reducing public resources to spend on public services. And that context is still there. Perhaps it's even greater as a result of COVID and what we've seen through COVID as well. So that sense of getting the best from our public resources is still there. That sense that we do need to drive prevention in order to help better serve our local communities is also still there and I suppose the other learning from COVID as well is the importance of collaboration which was a key part of what Christy was talking about as well and we've seen what can happen when people are empowered and fiscally resourced to collaborate we've seen the difference that can make to our communities. Could you tell us maybe about what brought about the setting up of the commission? The catalyst that brought about the Commission was the report of the Independent Budget Review Group. Um, this was a group of three people who were asked to look at budgetary matters and they reported in July 2010 and amongst their many recommendations was one that we needed to look at the delivery of public services. They recognised that we were moving into a difficult period, we were in a difficult period in terms of budgetary politics, but there was also the issue of whether we were um, delivering services as well as we might. And the background to that, the deeper background to that, was that we'd had a long period of real growth in public spending that coincided with the early years of devolutions. For the first decade or so, the annual average growth rates, real term growth rates in public spending was like 5% which is phenomenal growth. That's greater growth in spending annually than any time outside wartime. But that had come to a juddering halt with the Great Recession. And so there was a question as to, well, what do we do now? 
But also, and I think crucially, the, 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 the second part is important too, is that over that period of 10 years, lots of policies had been designed, um, announcements made, and so on and so forth. The question was, well, were we delivering? Were we actually delivering? Because it's very easy to pass legislation to make a policy pronouncement by a minister or wherever in Holyrood, but it's meaningless unless and until it's delivered on the ground. So the, there was a kind of combination of factors coming together, um, but the real catalyst undoubtedly was the report of the IBR. How did um, councils feed into the Commission's work? So we did we did feed into the thinking. Um, I mean, Campbell Christie took a very inclusive approach to developing the work of his commission and the commissioners were out talking to people and hearing evidence and all the rest of it. Um, I, I think though the way councils fed into it was as a follow-up more. Certainly that was, if I think back, that was more of what I saw. Like first of all, the reception to it and then right, what, are, what will we do with this? Because it says the things that we would want it to say. We believe in these 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 uh, this way of working, we believe in this way of delivering services. We want to do to do all of this. So, what do we? How how could we take that forward? How can we make some of that happen? Um. So so I felt there was quite a lot of um feed in afterwards in terms of trying to make things happen. Can you tell me a bit about what the initial reactions were to the recommendations? Kind of were people receptive to it? Well, the work of the Commission deliberately and consciously went out of its way to try and build consensus and to find consensus. And there was a big effort. I think some of the earliest meetings we had were with politicians from all the different political parties to sh make sure that whatever was recommended, that it, it would win broad support. And of course, at that point in time, when we were set up, um, we were looking at the election that was coming forward in a number of months' time, and, and it wasn't clear at that stage who was going to win. Uh, the SNP in the end ended up winning, you know, an overall majority, but that wasn't clear um, in the latter part of 2010. There was, you know, polls were suggesting that Labour would win. Um, so, you know, we wanted to write a report that would have the endorsement support, regardless of whoever was in power, because we were due to report after the 2011 election, and I think that worked. That worked. There was broad support for it. As a Council Chief Executive of the time, can you think of what the initial reactions to recommendations were like? So Christie was one of these reports, or was one of these outcomes, if you like, because the report was the outcome from a, a significant piece of work that he did, which was um, universally accepted in a way that other reports hadn't. So there had been a few reports in the preceding years um, which hadn't been as well received. Um, and it, it wasn't that they got a bad reaction or anything like that. It's just that they weren't as as sort of seen as 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 such a kind of universally uh, agreed way of taking things forward. The other term that we associated or or attached to to Christie's um, Campbell Christie's piece of work was um, that it was a blueprint, a blueprint for how we should be taking forward the reform of public services in Scotland. And I say public services in the widest sense because um, we spent quite a bit of time talking about it not just being about local government, but about the wider voluntary third sector, potentially private sector, but, but all of us that were involved in delivering services in Scotland. So the, the four pillars of uh, that, that Christy outlined around um, people, performance and um, partnership, and um, prevention were all absolutely accepted. When when I talked about it, I added a fifth pillar, a, a fortunately another P actually, um, which was about place, because when you look at all of those other four pillars, um, place becomes really important. Um, you know, how people feel about where they live, where things are happening, um, what, what role they've got, what control they've got in that place. Um, I I thought certainly both at um, Scottish government level, local government level, um, generally people were very supportive in, in the third sector as well. In fact, so supportive that um, COSLA then went on and did a further piece of work, which was around the Commission on Local Democracy to, to take it that stage further and to look at what the, 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 
the democratic implications of taking some of that 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 forward, which was also again um, a really really good piece of work. Um, but it, 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 as I say, it, it resulted in something else, and there was a lot of activity afterwards around public service reform as well. And I suppose one of the the underlying um, aspects of the Christie Commission, which has landed and persevered over that period, has been um, people's talk about prevention and the desire to create prevention and creating the distinction between early intervention and prevention, and 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 this whole concept about stopping bad things happening, which is what prevention was all about. So there was a real consensus around uh, across parties between local and central government, the third sector, private sector, um, and the vast range of different uh, policy areas. So there was no serious opposition to it, which in a sense should worry us, because when everybody's agreeing, there's usually <laughs> maybe not saying very much, but there was a consensus there with the odd kind of gripe being, being expressed. Um, but, you know, as I say, it's difficult to think of any serious criticism. And that was, I mean, I must say that was a bit worrying for me because in a sense, the report was really deliberately designed to, to, to stimulate debate. It wasn't the final answer. It could never be the final answer. And I think for me, in retrospect, one of the weaknesses was that there wasn't a critical engagement with it. There was too many people, too many people were saying, yeah, we love this and we should do this. Um, but nobody was saying, you know, well, what are the problems with doing this? How do we do this? Uh, that's what I had anticipated would happen. And I guess in retrospect, I'm a bit disappointed that that didn't happen because, you know, doing something that re really needs to be done is usually not easy um, and involves some challenges. Um, and, and, you know, perhaps in retrospect, we should have been a bit more challenging. Yeah, so I was just thinking, is, you know, anything in the, the, the commission in the report that you could have taken further? in retrospect? I think one of the things I would have emphasised to a greater extent is there, but I mean, I guess sometimes it's been lost sight of, is that the four key principles that were outlined, um, these were seen, supposed to be seen as a whole, you know, and not to be kind of, it's not like a, a menu where you pick and choose what you want. And that's what we've seen happening. You know, there's been a focus on one or other, but not the package. There's been no awareness of the importance of the package and also the challenges that comes with that because i mean frankly if you're aiming for a more efficient service and you're aiming for great public engagement that's that these two principles can clash and so we need to find a way around that and we need to address that um so i think sometimes there's been um a, a, a kind of willingness to pick and choose can you think of any other reports or commissions that have complemented or added value to the initial report Oh, I think there's been a series of, um, I mean, it's difficult to kind of know where to begin, but there, there have been so many. And, and, and in a way, I wouldn't see Christie as a starting point. Christie is just one of numerous efforts to kind of raise these issues. There have been some that have focused on specific policy areas. Um, you know, we've seen, you know, the care review and so on. I think all of these things have been part of a, a story. What I think Christie tried to do was to kind of, at that time, to encapsulate all of that kind of thinking and kind of distill it into a single report. And and I say, I think that much that has come since from a range of different bodies has said very similar things. Um, and and some have gone, you know, specifically into particular policy areas. So I, 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 I don't see Christie as necessarily the the starting point or even the central point. And, and I often say, you know, there's nothing novel in the Christie report. It's not, it's not, you know, brain size. It's not just came up and said, ah, we found the Eureka, we found them, the magic bullet or whatever. What it did was to distill existing good practice. A lot of the stuff we talk about had been done in many, many places. As you say, there were real pockets of it. And the question is, how do we, how do we kind of learn from that and encourage similar kind of, of, of actions. And I want to say similar, not the same. That's the thing, because one of the things we've been very conscious of is that there could be no blueprint. This is what you must do here 
in where I'm sitting in North Berwick must be the same as it's done in Lerwick or in Burness or Glasgow or, 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 or wherever. It, local conditions require to be taken into account and that's why it can't be a blueprint. And that's why also I think some of the work that's been going on in local communities is hugely valuable. Um, and, 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 and I think I think it links to it, even if, and will often be the case, those who are behind it have never heard of Christie or never read the report. It doesn't matter. It's the thinking that's there. Um, and it wasn't our to start with. It was out there. Um, we just tried to bring it together. <laughs>